treatment for breast cancer. Went to my general physician, too young, don't worry. Go look at a mammogram. Went in there, too young, don't worry, no problem. We had an ultrasound, we had a biopsy. He still convinced me I was too young. So a couple weeks later, while Jerry and I were planning our wedding anniversary, because it was our wedding anniversary that day, we got the call, and it was cancer. It was really hard for me. And it wasn't that it was just cancer, it was growing fast, which meant that we had to act immediately. It was a whirlwind from there, interviewing doctors. We only had one week. Um, interviewing doctors, being able to find a solution. Where were we going to go? What were we going to do? As well, I had to tell the kids. Same day, sat down with the kids. I've got four, Frank, Christian, Shane, Bella. And each one handled it so differently. But we drew strength on each other, and we said, we're going to fight through this together. We didn't know it was going to come, but we're going to fight through it together. And when we said that, we meant through. We weren't stuck in it, but we were going to go through it together as a family. So first came the surgery. I had a bilateral mastectomy. Even though they found it in my left, they thought it was best to do a bilateral mastectomy. The recovery after the surgery didn't quite go as planned because during the surgery when they were inserting my cord, they nicked my lung. So the next day as I laid in the hospital bed with my husband Jerry, uh, it collapsed. So if anybody's ever heard of an emergency bedside chest tube, it's painful. So I spent the next 11 days in the hospital with my family as my lung reinflated. So that was the first step. Shortly thereafter was chemo. And I know there are a lot of women in here who have had chemo, and chemo sucks. <laughs> it is the worst. And I had 16 rounds of chemo. So if you're an oncologist in this room, I apologize, because I know you hate it when we say this. I had the red devil. Because it's called the red devil for a reason. It goes through your veins, it burns you from the inside out, and it makes your heart beat out of your chest. It's miserable. In fact, I signed up for the Susan G. Cohen race for the cure. I was really excited about it. Three days before the race, I had my first chemo. And your first chemo is the worst. In fact, I remember crying in the kitchen with my husband saying, I'm done. I'm done. No more chemo. That hurt. But I sucked it up and went to the race for the cure. And it was amazing. I got there and they were lining up all the survivors. So they had one year survivors, five, twenty. So everybody's holding up their hands saying what year of survivor they are. I wasn't. So I kind of looked around nervously and just put a zero up. So this nice lady came up to me. I'll never forget this. And she came up to me and she said, no, no, honey. How long of a survivor are you? I said, well, I'm not. I just had chemo. And she said, you know what? We're all survivors right out the gate because we will survive this. And that was And that's something that I didn't know. Going into this race, I didn't know I was a survivor. So I got to be in the front of the parade holding the banner so proudly and led that march and it made a difference for me. Being there surrounded by all those other women who were just lifting me up when I was ready to go down the rabbit hole. So obviously the common race for the cure was a big turning point in my life. But let me say this again, chemo sucks. <laughs> so I lost 30 pounds, pretty much because I was puking my brains out the whole time. Lost all the hair, all the hair. I, I didn't know that that was actually gonna happen. Um, so here I was, skin and bones, pale, very pale, no hair. It was really tough for the kids to see. Um, Bella was eight at the time. She took it the hardest. Because all she saw on the outside was a shell of a woman. And uh, couldn't move as fast as I used to, couldn't play. The hardest thing that she asked me, almost every day is, how many more days until you die? It's really hard to tell your little girl that you're going to make it 
when she asked those questions. But I always told her, I said, I'm missing my great grandbabies. And I said, that means you have to have a baby. Their baby has to have a baby. And so it was one of those things, and it was a powerful moment for us. And when she had a hard time looking at me from the outside, I had her close her eyes, and I said, okay, now hear my voice. Do I change? She said, no. And I said, because all you're looking at is on the outside. You know, I'm still here. So that was, that was tough to go through. Um, okay, I'm gonna go to a different subject than that. <laughs> okay, so one thing I didn't know about was genetic testing. So, uh, when I was 17 years old, I had ovarian cancer. Very early stages, very quick, got it out, we're good to go. My grandmother died of ovarian cancer. Back then, nobody thought of genetic testing. So, of course, when I had my genetic test done, I was wrapped alone. Obviously. So then my mom and my sister went to go have the genetic test done as well. And of course, they were BRCA1 as well. They thought great about it, long and hard, and they decided they were going to go ahead and have the bilateral mastectomy, both of them together, and the radical hysterectomy as well. And this is where God had his hand. When they tested my mom's breast tissue after it was removed, she had cancer. But here's the beauty of it. It was such in the early stages, no chemo, no radiation, she was immediately a survivor. So it was fantastic. <laughs> so it's one of those moments when your mom calls you and says, I'm so sorry that you had to go through it, but thank you. <laughs> you saved my life, and you know, I don't know if I saved your life, but I know I'm pretty happy to have her around still. So I know the struggles, the surgeries, the chemo, the unknown. So if you're out there right now fighting the battle, I have seen some amazing scarves and hats, by the way. Love it. So if you're out there fighting right now, just keep fighting. Keep fighting. Don't give up. I promised my husband every morning when I was going through chemo, I was going to get up and get dressed. I didn't mean that I really made it that far all the time. Maybe made it from the bed to the couch, but I got up every morning and got dressed. I was gonna fake it till I made it. And in fact, I had chemo on Christmas Eve. That was fun. So instead of having it as being a Debbie Downer on it, I decided to bring Christmas presents and have our two youngest in the elementary school have all their classmates make cards for the chemo patients. So on Christmas Eve, we played Santa with my little chemo curtain tote. Even when I was in the hospital for 11 days, I was blessed with flowers from everywhere. It was amazing. So, as I sat there, because it's quite boring, as you know, in a hospital for 11 days, we decided to divide up all of our flowers and deliver them to all the other patients in the hospital. So, instead of looking at cancer and the surgeries and everything as a negative, we tried to turn it into a positive. Show the kids that together as a family, we can fight through anything. So, whatever you do, find your support system. It's huge. Your support system will get you through this. I was my husband. He was amazing. That's my husband right there. He went to every appointment with me. He is six seven, and this man stayed on a couch in a hospital for eleven days. <laughs> and those couches are not big. He held me. He cried with me. He bought me blueberries when I wanted blueberries and cucumbers when I wanted cucumbers. Um, he even cleaned the toilets with lemon scented cleaner so that that way when I was puking it smelled nice. <laughs> so, uh, he's my rock. Has been, always has been. Did everything that I needed and I can't thank him enough because there were a lot of moments, a lot of struggles where we wanted, I wanted to give up. But he didn't let me give up. He pushed me. He pushed me through it. So it's amazing when you have that support system. It's amazing the generosity that comes from your family, the community. Coleman, you guys are amazing. From a bilateral mastectomy, chest tube, chemo, reconstructive surgery, radical hysterectomy, all of it. I had angels blessing our family over and over, from feeding our family to taking the kids to sporting events. In fact, right before my 14th surgery, or excuse me, my 14th chemo treatment, the doctor came in and said, I'm so sorry, but we can't give you chemo today. And I had two more to go. And I said, well, 
well, why not? And they said, insurance won't cover it. And what killed me is what insurance actually said. They didn't feel that it was vital to my survival. I think two, or two chemo treatments is quite vital to my survival. The doctors thought it was as well. We didn't know what to do. We spent all of our money, resources, everything, reaching out to the community for support. And then the next day, we got a phone call from FSR, well, my work. Um, and they got all the employees in our office to donate. And they paid for my last two rounds of chemo. I'm going to be holding up to your survivor. 